Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and um, today I wanted to show you a video that's quite disturbing, and it kind of puts things into perspective as well, because, you know, people worry about, or people are kind of mimicking and making fun of people who are going out and panic buying. Now, in Jamaica, they've got a lockdown in seven miles in Bull Bay, yeah, seven miles in Bull Bay. And they're only allowing um, one visitor to anyone in hospitals. They've shut down all the clubs, all the bars and all the entertainment. What else have they done? Um, so when you think about what we've got to look forward to, if the lockdown happens on Friday, which is when it's scheduled, I think it's scheduled about midday, um, these are the kind of things that people worry about. And, you know, there was a woman at work and she said, oh, she's going to be so depressed if she has to stay at home. Now, you would think that somebody who's got, who's got a husband and who's going to go home and spend time with her husband, she doesn't have to work, she's getting paid, she'll be happy. But she's obviously chosen poorly. And the person she's going to be spending 14 weeks with, she can't stand him. It's all right in small doses, and that's what you find in a lot of relationships. People are with people they don't like. They tolerate them, and they're okay in small doses, but once you get to spend too much time with them, and that person starts getting on your nerves, they don't like it. So this woman is going into depression. A lot of people are going to be forced to reintegrate with the family. So you better hope that you've chosen well and that the family or your spouse or your partner is somebody you're happy living with. Because if you're on lockdown and you have to spend 24 hours, seven days a week for goodness knows how long, you better like your partner. Anyway, on a more serious note, um, Jamaica is keeping open the markets, the supermarkets, the corner shops and the pharmacies because they're deemed essential to um, the continuation of life. No more than 20 people in any gathering and I don't think they're going to allow more than 20 people in any supermarket. And yeah, so look at the reason why people panic by, even though they haven't seen this video, it's putting it into perspective as to why people feel as though they should. And it is quite disturbing. Well, I think it is. Yeah. This is... This is Seven Mile Bolvier. This is the community. This is not really the community that victim number one come from. But in another area she come from, but not right where... No. And for four days now, we out of food. The soldier and the police them lock down in here. We cannot come out to get nothing for the kids them. We not see nobody come come deliver no food. If we not have it so we have corona, come test we, make we get a release. Me need release. Me apart from my heart, my hungry. If me so we say, me am also not dead. This year I'm a fridge empty. Not even water we not. And them have me lock up. What we lock up for? Could that be hungry? This come like on a corona will kill we. I'm hungry. Look on my mouth deep joy. When I do something for we. Come contest we. I make we start get something to eat. Eh? This not happy. We not happy. The people are afraid of them one another. We are run from one another. Man are run from woman. Pitney are run from Pitney. So why do you know how come test we? This not have nothing to do with politics. Politics out of the question. This not and a politics. Help with the out of folk. Help we help. Come in. I see that little building there, and if it kept me lively, it would water. That would sell me little clothes, them and support that. And this soldier, them camp for me, for the premises. Me can't sell nothing, because no. last week, me not sell nothing. No. So, oh, me, I go eat. Oh, me, I go eat. Tell me, oh, me, I go eat. At my age, me, number one, nobody know what nobody right now. Everybody fear them one of them. So, me need some money, and me need some food, and me need a test. Please come test me and the whole of my family. Make we get a release. If the boss not come today, we are take drastic action. We are going to lie down in the middle road. I make them sister, we need them. We are not black in the road. We are going to use our body. I make the soldier and police them beat with. When we are doing it. 
Because all long, all long we be stay without food. All long. This, you see a man in, and now I'm gulling me walk. I take the gully the riverbed and find my shop and get some food. I don't have none today. Empty. Them empty. No, 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 no come in to serve them. No grocery people now come sell the shop them. No, no. From Friday, no bread bag no come in. So all, I do the community where we have the people them buy out the shop. All over the shop are some dry biscuits. No, no, over there. I tell us in a line in my tongue. We make sure I tell people, say, this is not about politics. Because they must start your politics thing. But I know the politics are healthy. What they are talking about. Come, come test me and make me get a relief. That's all we need. Because I don't want my country dead off with corona, you know. Me don't want to kill off my country, you know. So if the people them believe, say, this is a community where them feel like we have it, come and test us. That's what we can release. Because without a test, you don't have no car. You understand? And me, I'm going to be the first one in the line when the chop come. Me, I'm going to be the first one to get tested. So please don't come test me. Who are the people? That video is about six minutes long, but that woman is desperate. And for those of you who do not understand Patwa, I'm going to translate it for you. Um, she said... Um, the victim that died from the coronavirus didn't come from there, but yet they've locked down the area. They've had four weeks without food. They've been isolated. There's no food coming in. There's The shops haven't got any supplies. Her fridge is empty. She's hungry. She said people are turning on one another because they're hungry. And she's saying if you believe that they've if we if if the government believes that they've got the coronavirus, they should come and test them and not just isolate them without any evidence. Um she says the place that she works, she has a little shed, and that's how she makes her money. But the soldiers have camped there, so she can't go in there and make any money. And she said that she's gonna take. They're gonna take drastic action and use their bodies on the road. Um, and you know they're gonna to have to get beaten up because that's how bad it's got. She said. I think she said yesterday or the day before she walked miles. She got some food from one little corner shop. She went back there today, but the shop is empty. They're they're not delivering to the shop. There's just some dry biscuits in there. There's no. The bread van hasn't come. And she's saying it's not about politics. She's saying she doesn't want Jamaica to catch the virus, but she just wants to she just wants to be tested so that people can so they can stop being isolated and they can get some food. So, you know, <clears throat> when you think about that worst case scenario, people in the UK, you know, people are laughing at them and saying, Oh, you've You've got all this food in your basket. What are you buying up for? And you know what's interesting? A lot of the Brits, they're so blasé and cruel about it. It's almost like they're not worried about it. I don't know whether they're hiding their um, fear or not, but the majority, it's really the non-Brits who are panicking and who are filling up their baskets. But I tell you something. When they close the schools, that is going to affect everyone. So they can be blasé and talking about, you know, why are you filling up your baskets? But look at that lady. If they had known they were going to be on a lockdown, they would have got supplies in. And when you don't know how long you're going to be locked down for, you have to kind of get something in to last you for maybe a month or two. So this, this was a sudden clampdown, a sudden lockdown. They didn't know about it. Now, we've seen films and we've seen videos and we've seen photographs of soldiers in Clapham and we've seen um, um, video footage of um, army, army trucks coming from Birmingham to London. And the lockdown is imminent. We hear that it is um, on Friday. Now, I was watching the live um, speech to the nation with Boris Johnson today. And um, in response to one of the ladies um, who said, 
So what are you going to do? How are you going to protect the public? Why aren't you locking us down like Italy and all the other countries? And he said the right the right thing at the right time to that response. And he also mentioned it earlier, but he didn't mention it in relation to the lockdown. But in relation to the lockdown, that's when he said the right thing at the right time. So he hasn't openly declared that we're going to have a lockdown, but people who work in the federal um, government and in the police force and who leaked out the information, apparently... Um, Apparently, he is, you know, the lockdown is happening on Friday. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's fake, fake news or not. But the fact of the matter is, even if it isn't, and it's going to happen not on Friday, but next week, people are being prepared to be locked in their houses indefinitely. So you can't blame them. And it's so tragic to see that lady talking about she's dead for hungry and you know there's a hang a hungry man is an angry man and you know when you start taking food from people's mouths they start turning on each other and you know is that what this is all about making people hungry and you know like some you know like I think it was in France I was watching they end up, you know, even though people are buying all these supplies, they can actually requisition all these supplies. If they feel there's some places, so they say, who don't have any, they can go and raid your house and take out what you have and give it to somebody else or they just keep it for themselves. So it's not a very nice um, thing to, it's not something that we are looking forward to. And now the schools are going to be closed for up to six months, they say. Well, Scotland um, has forecasted six months. In response to that question, Boris said, oh, well, we're not sure how long it's going to take. And then, on the one hand, he's saying he's closing down the schools, but then for children of um, essential workers like the NHS and the police and that, you know, there's going to be schools open so that they can show up at work so I don't know I'm sure those parents whose all the other kids are off I'm sure those parents would prefer to be off with their children but they can't afford to do that if they're going to be penalized if there's an option for them to go to work because if they don't go to work they can't claim they haven't got childcare because the government is putting on something for them. And if they don't go to work, they are not going to be paid. So what happens then? It's really, really not good. And I just feel sorry for some of those parents. And they're talking about you can't leave them with your grandparents because your grandparents are elderly. Some of these parents, that's all they have. All they have is their grandmothers to look after the children. And now Boris um, Johnson is saying, oh, you can't leave them with the elderly because they're the most vulnerable. So what is he saying to people? He's basically saying that you can't work, you have to stay home with your kids, and even if you've got um, parent, grandparents to look after them, you're not allowed to give them to the grandparents. You know, it's really like, well, it's deliberate chaos because they could manage it much better. But, you know... Some people have written to me and said, you know, I've told you this before and why are you so surprised and you should have talked about this before. But to be honest, I believe that everybody has their own story to tell. If you've got something to tell, you tell the people about it. I will talk about topics that I'm interested in, that I have a passion about, that I believe in, that I feel I can express in my own way. I'm not going to be a messenger for someone else. And I'm not, you know, because that I just feel like a scapegoat when that happens. I'm kind of thinking to myself, why do you want me to tell that to the public? Why can't you tell that to the public? The same way I started off with one subscriber, you start off with one subscriber, you tell them what you're concerned about and you'll get your following, and you'll get that message out. I'm not going to be a scapegoat for anyone. 
I'll share what I feel comfortable with and I'll share it in a way I feel comfortable. And if it's not to the majority of you's liking, well, I can't do anything about it. I've got to be true to myself. I have to be my authentic self. So I'll choose the topics I wish to talk about. It might touch on some of the topics and you might want me to go deeper. I'll go at a level I feel comfortable with. Anyway, that's all on that. And yeah, ciao for now.